rigging. I'm sure many of you get a headache just thinking about it, but hopefully I can change that today. I'll show you how to rig, which settings to use, how to make the process easier, and what things you should keep in mind. And if you want to go even further, I'll also show you how to turn those rigs into IK rigs to make the animation process much easier. So watch until the end. Let's go. So I'm using this model from Mixamo to showcase my rigging workflow. You can use the same model, just download it from there. I've of course deleted all weight painting groups and the rig. In this case, the model has really good topology, as you can see here. In the end, having good topology is always important, but if the mesh has too much geometry, the viewport can get laggy. On the other hand, if it has too little, the model won't bend the way you want. By the way, if you have the chance to make your model symmetrical, do it. It'll save us a lot of time later. With your model ready, click on Add Armature Single Bone. But before we start, go to the Viewport Display Settings and turn on In Front. This will make the rig always visible, even when it's inside the model, which makes everything easier. Try to place the bone at the center of the model, then scale it down. Always check from both the side and front views to make sure it's positioned correctly inside the model. With the bone selected, go into edit mode. Select the top of the bone and press E to extrude. Extrude about three to four times, one for the hips, one for the chest, another for the neck, and so on. Again, make sure the bones are positioned correctly by checking from different views. Now let's move on to the arm and hand. But before that, it's important to understand where the bending points are. The end of a bone is the point where it bends. So don't just extrude and place bones randomly. Always think about how the body actually moves. For example, we can't bend our forearm in the middle. It only bends at the joint between the upper arm and forearm. So place your bones accordingly. So we create one bone for the shoulder, one for the upper arm, another for the forearm, and one more for the hand. The spheres between the bones represent the bending points of the rig. That's where the joints will rotate. For the fingers, we won't extrude from the main rig. Instead, select the hand bone and press Shift plus D to duplicate it. This gives us a new bone that is still parented to the main rig. Just like before, make sure it's positioned correctly by checking from both the front and side views. Once it's in place, extrude it two times to form the finger. After that, select all three finger bones and press Shift plus D to duplicate them. Move them to the next finger and make sure everything is positioned correctly. Repeat this process for all five fingers. Just keep the bend points and each finger's position in mind. For the legs, we duplicate a bone again and position it correctly. Just like with the arms, we create one bone for the upper leg and another for the lower leg with the bend point at the knee, since that's where the leg bends. Then we add a bone for the ankle with a bend point between the lower leg and the foot and another for the toes, placing the bend point between the foot and the toes. We won't rig every single toe like we did with the fingers because in 90% of cases, you won't need them. Now comes the easy but slightly annoying part, naming the bones. This step is important because Blender needs to know which bones to use, and it also helps keep everything organized. So, go into edit mode, select each bone, and give it a proper name like forearm, upper arm, hand, and so on. Do this for every bone in the rig. To work with Blender's naming system correctly, we need to add .l or .r at the end of each bone name to tell Blender whether a bone is on the left or right side. We didn't do this earlier because it's easier to automate now. First, select all the bones that are on the left side of the model, but make sure not to select any bones in the middle, like the spine or neck. Then press Ctrl plus F2 to open the batch rename window. In the pop-up, change the data type to bones, set the operation to set name, and choose the method suffix. In the name field, type .r, then confirm with OK. This will automatically add the r suffix to all selected bones. And now we can do the same for the other side, with just two clicks. With the left side bone still selected, go to the armature menu and click on Symmetrize. 
bam, the rig is automatically mirrored to the other side with correct positioning and the bone names updated from .L to .R. That's exactly why I said at the beginning that having a symmetrical model makes everything a lot easier. And now, just four more clicks to make the rig actually work. First, select your model, then shift plus select the rig. Press Ctrl plus P and choose with automatic weights. This binds the mesh to the rig. Now select the rig, switch to pose mode, pick any bone, and try moving it. Even though our rig works now, it still has some issues. For example, when we move the leg, part of the stomach move with it, and that's obviously not how a real body behaves. So we'll need to do some manual weight painting to fix these problems, and don't even think about clicking away now. Weight painting isn't as hard as it seems, trust me. To get started, select the rig, then shift plus select the model, and switch to weight paint mode. Here, you can click on each bone, and it will show you which parts of the model that bone is affecting. You can adjust the brush size and strength to control how much weight you're painting. What we'll do now is go into pose mode, move the leg into a bent position, and then switch back to weight paint mode. This way, you can clearly see what parts are moving incorrectly and start adding or removing weight so the mesh deforms properly. Once the area looks correct, use the blur tool to smooth out the weights so everything deforms naturally. After that, the leg bone should only move the leg and a small area above it, not half of the stomach. Now go through the rest of your rig and check if all the parts move correctly. If something looks off, pose that part and switch to weight paint mode. Then tweak the weights until it looks natural in that pose. Simple as that. Great, you've got your model rigged and can start posing or animating, but if you want to take it a step further and create those cool IK rigs, keep watching, because that's what we're doing next. By the way, if you have any questions or need help, feel free to DM me on Instagram or leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. With our basic rig done, go into edit mode and extrude a new bone from the ankle. Name this bone IK.L. Then in the bone settings, remove its parent and disable the connection. Next do the same from the knee. Extrude a new bone, remove its parent and connection, but this time name it PV.L for pole vector. Move this bone slightly away from the leg so it's easier to work with later. Now for the magic, add an inverse kinematics IK constraint to the lower leg bone. For the target, select the rig we just made. Then for the bone, choose the IKL bone we extruded from the ankle. Next, set the pole target to the same rig, and for the pole bone, select the PV.L bone we created from the knee. At this point, your model will probably look messed up. Don't worry, go to the chain length setting and set it to 2. This controls how many bones the IK chain affects, and 2 is usually right for a standard leg setup, but it can vary depending on your rig. If the leg still looks twisted or out of position, adjust the pole angle until the leg snaps back into its correct pose. Now go into pose mode and try moving the IK bone. It should work. But if your leg bends in the wrong direction, like mine, don't panic. Just go back into edit mode, select the knee joint, and move it slightly in the direction where the knee should naturally bend. Then try again. That small adjustment usually fixes the issue. Now pose your leg and move the pole bone to see if everything works correctly. If it does, we'll make sure that the pole target doesn't affect the foot. To do that, select the foot bone, go into edit mode, and remove its parent. Then add a child of constraint to the foot bone. For the target, choose the rig, and for the bone, select the IK bone. Now the foot can move separately, giving you more control over the animation. That's it. Now just repeat the same process for the other leg. After we're done with the legs, we move on to the arms. The process is almost the same, so no worries. First, extrude one bone from the wrist, and this will be the IK control. Then, extrude another bone from the elbow for the pole target. As before, disable the parent and deform options on both of these new bones. Now add an inverse kinematics IK constraint to the forearm bone. Set the target to the rig and use the two bones we just created, the IK bone from the wrist and the pole bone from the elbow. Don't forget to name them properly, like IK arm L and PV arm L, to stay organized. Again, set the chain length to 2 and adjust the pole angle until the arm rotates correctly. Now test the setup, move the IK and pole bones to see if everything works as expected. If the arm bends in the wrong direction, slightly move the elbow joint in the direction the arm should naturally bend. 
disable the parent on the hand bone, add a child of constraint, set the target to the rig and the bone to the IK bone. Done. Now the hand follows the IK control. Now look at our masterpiece. Great job. One last thing. We need a root bone to move the entire rig. Just duplicate the hips bone, move it down, and name it root. Then parent the hips bone to the root and also parent all IK and pole bones to the root as well. Done. Now you can move the whole rig easily. Ladies and gentlemen, the rig is done, but we still want fancy controls. Just add a cube, disable its render visibility, and go into edit mode. Then select any IK control bone, go to viewport display, check custom shape, and pick the cube as the custom object. Now you can move and customize the rig using that shape even change its color. Do the same for every IK and pole bone and use different shapes if you want. Now your rig not only works, it looks clean too. All right, we've got the rig, but what if the character doesn't move like a human or has completely different shapes? I'm not going to rig this beauty right now, but I'll quickly show you where you'd place the bones for a setup like this. Start with the back. I always start at the hips and move to the neck. One bone for neck, head, and here also mouth. Here we need three bones for the leg and one for the foot. Just keep in mind where he would bend his leg. For his arms, we also need three bones and then four for his finger. Here are the bending points. So hopefully I was able to cure your headache and if not, follow me on Instagram and DM me. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon.